I'm Sylvan Soloway for the New York Post, coming to you from the Zipper Factory, where we're going to see what happens when the lights and the zippers go down. You may have heard burlesque is back, but this time around, it's not all about the blonde bombshells. Some women are trying to make sure that burlesque is more colorful than ever. It's a New York moment. It doesn't get much better than this. There was a lot of color. Beautiful and brown, they were amazing. The brown girls' burlesque may not be what you picture when you think of burlesque of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. The mainstream perception of what burlesque is is a very white, sort of 50s pinup, blonde bombshell. And the beauty of burlesque that a lot of people don't realize is that it's really about the freedom of expression. That could be because some research says burlesque came to the U.S. from England in the 1800s with a troupe called the British Blondes. But Brown Girls Burlesque says they're even different from the average new burlesque, which has seen a resurgence this decade. It's great because burlesque is representing, you know, the real woman, like all different shapes, all different sizes. And I was like, but the thing is, they were all white and they weren't representing me. So she started the Brown Girls Burlesque. It's going beyond a particular stereotype of a certain look or a certain aesthetic. Our audience is different, and the type of people that come to our show are actually kind of looking for something a little bit different. And with only two shows under their belts, or feathers, Brown Girls Burlesque is a hit. The theater crowded in almost 200 diverse New Yorkers, women, men, young, old, gay, and straight, and some who didn't even know what burlesque was. Tonight was the first time I heard of the word burlesque. Is that, did I say it right? But less. And while a lot of shows use vaudeville style acts like sword swallowing, juggling, and fire eating in between dances, Brown Girls Burlesque chooses to break things up with. <laughs> We're thinking like how it fits us and also even in everybody's pieces, like the cultural references. For example, Dame or Dame Cuchifrita did a Paso Doble performance. While Aurora Bubrialis did a tribute to Tina Turner, and all the girls were rolling down the river. Showing as much as you possibly can on a stage to as many people as you possibly can inspires a lot of other people to want to be more themselves. It's definitely something that uh, the communities of color didn't know they needed, but now can't live without. Their next show is set for February 2nd. Reporting from the stage at the Zipper Factory on West 37th Street, I'm Sylvan Soloway for the New York Post.